Welcome to this introductory video on how to use REDCap at Athabasca University. This video will walk you through creating surveys using REDCap once you have questions or items created. The purpose of this video is to introduce how to format surveys after questions or measures are created in REDCap. By the end of this video, you should know how to enable your survey and what this means, how to customize your surveys, how to organize multiple surveys, how to use your data dictionary, and how to move a project into production. Once you have started to create questions or variables in REDCap, you can begin to enable survey features and organize your questions into surveys. Once you have questions created, you can begin to format the overall survey. To do this, click on Return to Instruments. To enable the survey, click Enable. This allows you to collect data either by entering data into the survey manually or by generating a participant link. The Enable feature brings up a whole other set of options in a new window. First, at the top of the window, you can specify whether a survey is active, which means that respondents can take the survey, or not active, which means that it's not accepting any data. You can also add an offline message if you want to make the survey inactive. And this feature is really handy if you have the survey embedded in a public-facing web page that you don't directly control. This is one way for you to control if people can access your survey or not. You can change the survey title and add survey instructions, which are displayed at the top of the survey page. You can change the design of the survey, for example, by adding a logo, changing the appearance, the font, the font size, color scheme, and so on. You can customize a survey in various ways. Of note is the option to enable text-to-speech functionality, which allows the text to be read to participants and increases accessibility. Under survey access, you can set a maximum number of responses, limit the time for a participant to complete the survey, or allow participants to save the responses and come back later. But a warning about the come back later option though, Participants will need both a URL that is specific to them and an access code generated by REDCap to come back to their responses. In my experience, participants don't often realize that they need both pieces of information to do this. So if you're using this option, be sure to clearly communicate that participants will need both the URL and the access code in order to come back to their responses. The survey termination options determine what happens when the participant finishes that survey or measure. So you can specify whether participants are automatically routed to the next survey, see a message from you, or get directed to another web page once they've completed the survey. Once you finish setting up your survey, you can click Save Changes to accept those modifications. And then note that once you're back at the new screen, that the survey is enabled and a green shield with a check mark appears. You can always go back and edit your survey features later too. There are some other important features on the instrument page. For example, you can continue to edit the survey or the measure by clicking on the survey name. You can change the name, copy, delete, or download the survey by clicking on the Choose Action tab and selecting your preferred activity. You can download a PDF copy of the measure or survey. And also note that on this page, it shows you how many questions are contained in each survey or measure. You can also have multiple surveys or multiple measures in one project. So to create a new survey or measure, you can click the plus create button. REDCap will ask you where you want that new survey to go, so you don't have to create these surveys in sequential order. And once the new survey is created, you can go in and create the questions as we've discussed in the previous video. You can also reorder your surveys by moving your mouse over the box on the far left. When you do that, blue up-down arrows will appear, and then you can click and drag the survey to wherever you want it to go. And there are several advanced options. So this can include form display logic, which allows you to connect whether a form is displayed or not to other information in the survey. So this is skip logic for surveys or at the survey level. Survey queue determines whether participants see all the surveys in a list or not and how that list will appear. Survey login determines whether a participant is required to log in or authenticate themselves before they can respond to the questions. And finally, survey notifications determines whether you get notified or not every time someone responds to a survey. And finally, if you're tired of clicking on all those boxes and options, or if you just want to use someone else's existing REDCap survey or project, you can skip all this and use the data dictionary option instead. To access your data dictionary, go back to the project setup page. When you click on REDCap data dictionary, it takes you to a new page. And the current data dictionary can be downloaded from here as an Excel or .csv file. Once you've downloaded and opened your data dictionary, you can make edits to that dictionary, save it, and then re-upload it to REDCap. So this is useful when you're sharing measures. A project can be cloned and shared rather than having to enter everything manually over and over again. And it also makes editing the measure easier. Rather than going in and clicking on all of your questions and making all of the changes in your forms, you can download the data dictionary, make all of your changes to that document, and upload it to REDCap. 
If you're nervous about making a mistake or accidentally overwriting something, REDCap does validate the new data dictionary before implementing it. So if there's an issue, for example, you accidentally wrote over existing data or there's some issues with the logic, REDCap will give you a summary of the changes and notify you of any possible problems first before implementing it. At that point, you'll have the option of canceling the data dictionary upload and you can go back and change or fix the problems. Also be careful about using Excel syntax when you're modifying the data dictionary. Excel syntax doesn't always translate into REDCap. So either make sure that you're using REDCap friendly syntax or avoid using syntax altogether in your data dictionary. And the last feature we want to talk about here, we've gone over all of the main survey features, but in order to move from your testing phase to your active data collection, you'll need to move your project into production. When you're finished designing your REDCap survey and have thoroughly tested it, you can scroll down to the bottom of the project setup page to the final step, which is move your project to production status. There are two important things to keep in mind when moving your survey into production. First, it will ask you if you want to keep or delete the data that was captured while the survey was being tested. If the test data was mostly garbage, just tell it to delete all that data. But if some of the data was genuine pilot data, make sure to keep it. If at all possible, though, it's better to keep functional testing under the measure and actual data collection or pilot testing separate. That'll streamline things later on and ensure that you don't waste participant IDs and you don't have to do a lot of garbage uh, data deletion later. Second, once a project is in production, you might not be able to change measures in real time anymore. Instead, you'll have to go into draft mode, make the changes, and these changes have to be checked by REDCap or might need administrator approval. And this is just to make sure that you aren't accidentally making changes that are going to delete your data or mess up your project in any, any way. So you can make changes even after the project is in production, but it's easier to do your editing before you've gone into production. And this concludes our introduction to creating and formatting surveys or measures in REDCap.